this is about where it starts. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. One of the first things I wanted to do for the new year was push myself a little farther in terms of my painting. And I got this idea of doing dolphins and horses together who have similar markings. And I wanted to do kind of an Appaloosa orca because I had had this fantasy horse character that was an Appaloosa, a sugar bush draft, who could transform into an orca and he was spotted in that shape. So I kind of like the idea and I got a surprising amount of pieces out of it. This is my process. I wanted to get more drawing, like shots of me drawing, because I think people like that. They like seeing something come together. But I can't draw sitting up. I have to draw in bed. I'm like Frida Kahlo. I don't know if this is a good shot of the drawing or not. I think it moves around too much. I need like a more steady vision. This is my process. This is how I work. I do my underdrawing in red colored pencil because red can be removed once it becomes scanned and is a digital piece. Normally I do like Spanish type horses, so doing this guy as kind of a general grade horse was a little challenging. He's got kind of Frisian hair. Appaloosas are not known for having very good manes or tails, and they're very like the original horses that were actually bred were very skinny. And a lot of Appaloosas nowadays are just stock horses. And stock horses are a little boring for me. I just don't find them as interesting as other breeds. I think for a, a blanket Appaloosa, he turned out pretty good. He's, you know, got a very classic galloping kind of shape. I was thinking about giving him Mustang tufts, like, you know, hair around his feet like a Mustang, but I decided not to do that. A lot of this is both the underdrawing and then when I go over it with an actual pencil. And this was a process and a challenge for me, every part of it, because a lot of it was seeing, you know, how, how far can I push my horse anatomy and what I know, and how far can I push my line quality, that there are a lot of people that I admire that have just beautiful drawings. I want my drawings to be beautiful. I would like them to be, you know, maybe collectible, that somebody could frame this in their house and be like, why well, yes, that's a fine art piece by LKD Jennings. So we'll see. I really learned a lot about pencil strokes while I was working on this. Intent and, and confidence is important, and I've been working on this for about a year to just improve my lines, and it really paid off. And I was very pleased that I managed to get a drawing that was very fluid and had a lot of good line variation, a lot of good strokes. I think this is just a good drawing. I don't necessarily, if it ends up being a good painting, parts of it do. I'm just pleased that I managed to get such a good drawing. And this is the raw scan of it, so you can see, you know, my underdrawing and my actual pencil work. The original is going to be for sale, if that's a thing that happens. So now I've scanned and I've moved everything in to Clip Studio. And I'm starting to block out here. Something that young artists seem to have a hard time with is that they don't want to steal. Uh, the irony of that when you're, you know, doing fan art, I will have to digress on. But you don't have to reinvent the wheel. I didn't want to be bothered with making an ocean color scheme. So I just, I googled it. I think I went on Pinterest first and Google Images and tried to find something. And I knew because I was going to be dealing with the black of the orca and the white of the Appaloosa blanket, I wanted something that was going to complement that. 
So there's a lot of uh, dark kind of navy blue, but there's also a lot of turquoise, which I really like. It's one of my favorite colors. So a lot of the mid-tones here are just straight up selected from this color scheme. And is that stealing? I don't think so. I think it's stealing like an artist. It's obviously people want you to use their color schemes because why else would they do it? I'm starting to mess around with my background here. I don't like backgrounds, but I, I actually discovered two things at the time that really inspired my backgrounds. One was a guy who had done kind of these rectangle blocks and, and graphic designs as part of his backgrounds. And he was kind of a, a nature painter. And I really liked that. It was uh, very interesting to me. It looks graphic and fine artsy and profound. And he was a fine artist. So I was like, why don't we do a background like that? Guy? And then there's another person here on YouTube that does uh, epoxy and wood sculptures. I will do an edit here to give a shout out to his videos. But he cuts up wood, just like these little wood blocks, and, and lines them together so that the final statue has these organic shapes. His sculptures end up having the kind of cut wood as a dichotomy to his sculptures and shapes, and I really liked that. I had a lot of trouble with the orca eye. I kept, like, forgetting where their eyes are. I put the eyes, like, way too far forward. Here I'm just cleaning up. There's a lot of detail work that I wanted to do. I feel like my rendering is, like, way too broad and not nearly detailed enough, so... I also have a rule for myself that I'm not allowed to use a blender. I, I took like a tutorial. There's a YouTube tutorial out there that said if you want to get good at digital painting, do a hundred paintings without the ability to blend. That's taught me a lot. It's taught me a lot about brush economy and it's taught me a lot about what detail and good shape work means. I am progressing nicely and there's a big difference between like the very first paintings that I ever did versus this painting. And this painting was a nice checkpoint to just be like, all right, why don't we just go all out and see what we can do? And we're doing something big. I have been looking at other equine artists uh, for the same reason that I look at color schemes. There's no reason to reinvent the wheel. You don't have to like imagine a horse's skeleton and draw it, you know, from memory or photographs only. Somebody already did that. His name is Stubbs. And you honor the work that other artists have done by, you know, looking at their stuff and admiring their work. I have been trying to really pay attention to how people that I like paint horses. I am really annoyed with my screen saving software because, like, literally this hoof is the best piece of the painting that I've ever done in my entire life. It is like the sole reason for my existence currently. It is the best thing I've ever painted. The screen didn't capture it. It didn't capture like the best thing I've ever done in my life. So I am quite vexed by that. Nonetheless, looking at how other people paint things and if figuring out how somebody can paint a horse in 25 strokes that's amazing. That's great work. And that's why you should study the work of artists that you like. There's such a hesitation to use reference or like your pose stealing or what have you. And I don't get that. It really doesn't have any place. There's a, there's the hoof. That's not too bad. You can at least see it close up. Like, look at that. Look at that brush economy and the strokes. I really tried to look at how Norman Rockwell paints and how J.C. Leyendecker paints. I really like the way that they do their horses, but they also have like absolutely amazing and a beautiful shape language in their paintings. So that is also something that I have been stealing and studying because I would love it if my horses looked rendered the way that J.C. Leyendecker's horses look rendered. I also need to get better at brush strokes and confidence in my brush strokes as well because I tend to house paint, which is where you go back and forth on a stroke. 
and you get like zigzaggy kind of choppy shapes and if you're like precise with your stroke the way that a samurai is precise with his sword you will get much better shapes and then you'll also probably get edges which i can't even do at the moment really i can't even do edge work like soft edges versus hard edges but i will get there and i feel like i have a really good fundamental understanding of painting my brush strokes could probably use a little help but my shape work kind of makes up for the fact that my brushwork is bad. I will be posting some studies I've been doing of just like motifs. Again, that painting a horse in 25 strokes. There are a lot of fine artists out there that are attempting to do that. And I'm looking at their work. I will post some of the studies that I've done because that is very important to do. It's important to do studies of the people that you admire and would like to draw more like. I'm just kind of finishing up here. The orca was kind of the last thing that really got uh, a lot of detail work. And again, you see me changing the eye again, so for like the umpteenth time. I put the eye in the wrong place. So thank you, Digital Art, for being so forgiving. I do like the way I draw hair. I like the way I draw hair. I don't think I like the way I paint hair. I would like to do a lot of like loose strands. But I also felt like that would break my shape work and just kind of be this scribble that was visually distracting and it, it didn't fit with the rest of the painting. So I would like to get better at hair, especially doing like really fine hairs because those are important when you're doing horses. I learned a lot doing this and this is also a painting that I painted in like three sittings. I think it's probably about six hours of painting here. It's good to push yourself to find out where you are, and I like where I am, but I know I can already do better. So I will let the music take over here for the most part while we finish up. available for print on demand at Redbubble. If you would like a metallic version, it is available on display. If you would like to support my channel, you're welcome to buy me a coffee. I have links below to everything that you would like to find me on, including my Instagram, which usually gets a lot of previews of the stuff that I'm doing. Like! Scrip Snibe! Come here, Lumina.